Hi, it's Corrine for Wild Orchid Crafts and Knitwit Collections. Today I'm altering some composition books, and at the end of this video I will have more detailed photos and a better look at each of these books. But today, for the start to finish, I am working with the new Butterfly Garden Collection from Knitwit Designs. This is a stunning collection. There's lots of papers and lots of elements. So I hope you check it out. Here are two pieces that are gonna go for the inside of my book and the covers. The covers are cut to nine and three quarters by six and three quarters. The inside pages are nine and three quarters by seven and one eighth. And I distressed everything in black soot distress ink. I also used my heat gun to make sure that that ink was dry. For my book itself, I'm going to use some black soot distress pink paint and go around the edges, just getting rid of that white core. I also dried that with my heat gun as well. Some composition books do have a rounded corner, so if yours does, just go ahead and round the corners of your paper. And I like working on the inside of my book first and then the covers. So I'm going to be using some Mod Podge in matte finish and a large paintbrush. I'm covering my work surface and then I'm just going to add the Mod Podge to the inside or the back side cover, I should say, the inside of the back cover. And now I'm lining up my paper to the edges and making sure that it is adhered, adhered very well. I'm using a brayer and I'm really going around those edges to make sure that it's all glued down. If there's any edges that are coming up, you can simply add a little, peel them back, add a little more of your Mod Podge, and then press them down again. So again, I'm just pressing down all the edges, making sure that it's adhered. And now I'm going to seal the book with another layer of Mod Podge on top. This is completely optional, you don't have to do this, but these are going to be journals, therefore I wanted them to be a little bit more resilient. If something were to get on them, it could simply be wiped off, being that I sealed it with Mod Podge. And now I'm drying it with my heat gun. I'm adding those nonstick sheets, just in case there's um, a little bit of tackiness left. I didn't want it sticking to the paper. And now I'm doing the exact same for the front and back cover. With this collection, there are tons of elements. If you get the bundled pack, it saves, I believe, 20%, and you get lots of papers, lots of elements with it. You get an alphabet, numbers, some punctuation. So I hope you check it out. I'll have a link in the description box. And when you buy the bundled pack, you don't get any duplicate papers and there are a lot to choose from and what I like that they do with their collections is they give you elements that are already clustered and also separate pieces. So there's for example flowers that come in clusters so you don't have to do anything you can add them to your pages and they're done for you or they give you the separate flowers and ribbons and buttons lots of things that you can cluster it yourself and make it how you want to. So this front page, I did end up changing my mind because I decided I wanted to use a flower cluster on it. So I wanted to use a different piece of paper. So in the end, you'll see I just added a different pattern paper to the top of this, just using Mod Podge as well. And here's the finished cover. I also cut out one of their sayings. It says, blossom like a butterfly. I cut out a scallop behind it and look at this gorgeous cluster. What I did is I outlined it on my silhouette and added one of their papers, their pattern papers to it. And that way it gave me a shadow. And I love that you can do that with their collections. You can change it however you want. That did not come in it, but I simply gave myself a shadow and added it behind it. So it gives me a completely different look. So now using my glue, I'm just adding it to the back. That way I can layer them on top of each other. And I'm using paper to press it down. That way if any of the glue spills out, it gets on the paper. And now I'm sealing the top of it with some more Mod Podge. And all I did was let this set aside to dry. I didn't have to heat it with my heat gun. It dries really quickly. 
So I just set that aside while I'm working on something else. Again, layering it, I added a scallop of my own to the back of it as sort of my title for the front of the book and adding my Mod Podge to the top. This is one of their journal cards and I just made it large enough for a pocket for the inside of my book. So I'm just going to add my glue to the sides and the bottom, leaving the top open, which will give me my pocket. Beautiful saying. And now I want to give that flower cluster some dimension, so I'm going to add my scallop directly on top of the book. And now for the back side, I'm using some chipboard. I love using chipboard for dimensional, and that's just extra chipboard that I had. So I'm just adding my glue and placing that on top. And that ribbon, that braided ribbon, I had just enough left over, and I thought it looked perfect on the side. So I'm adding that with some hot glue. And I did the exact same process for the other composition books that I'll be showing you here in a moment. So here are some separate flowers that come with the elements. I am just adding those on top, again, giving it a little bit more dimension, and I added some to the top of the scallop as well. I love that all their collections come with flowers, matching flowers. Again, it, everything matches, so it makes it so easy to work on mini albums or scrapbook pages or cards, whatever you'd like to do. I do add some Sweetheart Blossoms from Wild Orchid Crafts. As you probably know, these are my favorite to work with. And now I'm adding some of their mixed pink self-adhesive pearls. I like using some glossy accents just to make sure that they do not go anywhere. And then I'm also going to be adding some flat back flower pearls. These are beautiful. I'll have links in the description box for all the products used today. And I'm adding those with some hot glue. So I'm just bending up the edges of my butterfly and look how gorgeous that cluster is. All the Knitwit collections are just beautiful. So I, ha I cut out two of their flags and I wanted to add those just for a little bit more interest. I added them to the front page as you can see using some glue. And here's a little bit closer look at the book. I absolutely love this collection. And the Sweetheart Blossoms go perfect with it. I love mixing paper flowers with the mulberry flowers. I know you've heard me say that a lot, but it's one of my favorites to do. For the inside page, I cut out one of the paint chips that comes in the collection, which I love those. That's a great journaling spot and added that to the pocket. And here are the other two books that I did. If you follow me, you saw that I did a mini album using On Knitwit Pond. And so I had to make a composition book for my sister. She collects frogs. So I did the cover of this very similar to the cover of the album again using their elements I use some Cosmo daisies and sweetheart blossoms and pearls from wild orchid crafts love the inside page I'm gonna add a coin envelope to the back of that page as well that paper is just gorgeous and I did another Parisian themed composition book I love the Ooh La La collection it's probably one of my favorites from Knitwit collections as you can see I did the Eiffel Tower I use some beautiful chrysanthemums and some silver gems and I also use some of their flowers that come in the elements I use the little poodle there and their lamp post and some gorgeous organza trimming from Wild Orchid Crafts and I also made a pocket on the inside front as well with one of the paint chips and the Florida Lee there and I use that postcard that comes in the collection absolutely stunning collection as well so I hope you've enjoyed today's process thanks so much for stopping by check out the description box for all the links